Okay, kita pergi kepada the last two factor that lead to formation of new species. So, kita ada hybridization and adaptive radiation. So, actually for hybridization, we want to focus more on allo polyploidy. Okay, which I believe that uh, all of you already learn it during semester 1, chapter 7, mu mutation. Okay. So, allo polyploidy, we want to focus more on plants instead of uh, animals. Sebab, uh, usually, allo polyploidy, dia sangat common in plants. Okay. Mm, okay, so, allo polyploidy ni refer kepada organism tersebut, dia ada extra set of chromosome. So, kalau normal organism, selalunya kita ada dua set of chromosome saja. Uh, one from paternal and one from maternal. So, kita deploy lah selalunya. Tapi, untuk kes allo polyploidy, usually organism that is produced have extra set of chromosome. Which is, mungkin dia ada 3N, 3 set, which is triploid, maybe 4 set, which is um, tetraploid, pentaploid and so on. Okay, uh, so daripada situ sebenarnya kita boleh menghasilkan species yang baru. But, it is not as easy as is uh, as what we heard okay okay let's move on so for hybridization definition is the process of interbreeding or mating of individual from different species or closely related species to form sterile hybrid so hybridization adalah satu proses di mana satu organism yang kita uh, sebutkan sebagai hybrid dihasilkan daripada kacukan antara spesies A dan spesies B maksudnya two different species okay so uh, kenapa kita tidak panggil offspring tersebut sebagai spesies kita panggil sebagai hybrid sebab hybrid dia sterile usually sterile species Kalau kita tengok balik definition of species, species adalah individual ataupun organism that can interbreed and then produce fertile offspring. So, dalam kes ni, kenapa hybridization dia menghasilkan hybrid sebab hybrid tu adalah sterile. Kenapa sterile? Sebab dia datang daripada uh, species yang berbeza. Species A interbreed or mating with species B. Uh, so, dapatlah uh, hybrid, uh, sorry, hybrid C. So, kenapa hybrid C, uh, hybrid C ni sterile? Disebabkan dia tidak ada homologous chromosome. No homologous chromosome, okay? Uh, so, bila tidak homolog, walaupun species A dengan species B, for example, dua-dua ada uh, 8 chromosome, let's say. But, uh, for species A, the the first chromosome uh, structure different from species B. So, tidak sama walaupun dia ada same chromosome number. That's why dia dapat hybrid C yang uh, doesn't have homologous chromosome. So, bila tidak ada homologous chromosome, macam mana kita nak buat meiosis? Okay? Uh, so, bila tidak boleh buat meiosis, kita tidak boleh produce gamete. That's why lah hybrid C dia sterile. Okay? Uh, so, um, uh, kenapa tidak boleh buat meiosis tadi? Sebab kalau kamu ingat balik during meiosis 1, for example, uh, homologous chromosome dia akan pair up to form bivalent and then dia akan lie side by side. Okay? Uh, so, kalau tidak ada homologous chromosome, macam mana dia nak duduk sebelah-sebelah? Pair up, okay? side by side. So, tidak boleh lah. Uh, so, itu reason dia. Okay? The second point of hybridization, the hybrid usually sterile due to no homologous chromosome for meiosis and no gamete produced. Yang ni saya dah sebut. And then example untuk hybridization adalah allo polyploidy in plants. And then allo polyploidy can overcome hybrid sterility by doubling the number of chromosome to produce fertile organism. So, disebabkan kita tahu... Um, Hybrid ni adalah sterile organism. So, macam mana kita nak jadikan dia fertile? Jawapan dia kita boleh doublekan uh, dia punya kromosom. So, kalau kita doublekan dia punya kromosom, actually kromosom dia dah ada pasangan, dah ada dia punya homolog. 
Uh, so, bila ada homologous kromosom, meiosis can occur and then gamete can be produced. So, kita boleh dapat uh, species yang baru, okay, which is yang fertile. Okay, next point. Fertile hybrid or polyploid usually appear as appear as a result of chromosome mutation which is non disjunction uh, selalunya kita dapat hybrid yang fertile ataupun organism yang barulah sebenarnya yang fertile disebabkan berlaku chromosome mutation dalam kes ni non disjunction okey uh, non disjunction during meiosis lah uh, so kita boleh dapat extra set of chromosome dekat situ menjadikan uh, uh, species tersebut ada homolog chromosome And then this fertile polyploid may then form a new subspecies or species. Okay. Uh, so, daripada fertile organism ni lah, kita boleh refer dia kepada new species ataupun new subspecies. Okay. Yang tak jauh beza lah daripada dia punya parents. And then speciation by hybridization and polyploidy are common in plant. Uh, so, formation of new species by allo polyploidy dengan hybridization ni sangat... Um, Senang ataupun sangat uh, paling banyak berlaku dalam plants. Okay? Uh, so, dia tidak berlaku dalam animal. Okay? Tidak sesuai sebenarnya allopolyploidy. Sebab allopolyploidy ni adalah organism tu having extra set of chromosome uh, daripada diploid. Okay? Uh, so, uh, kita recap balik lah eh, chapter 7 mutation. Uh, kata kalau kita ambil homo sapien human. So, what happen if we have extra one chromosome at chromosome 21? So, kita akan dapat total chromosome kita 47 instead of normal 46. So, by having extra one chromosome at chromosome 21, actually it will lead to genetic disorder that we call as a Down syndrome. Uh, so, can you imagine if we have extra set of chromosome, the whole set of chromosome. So, katakanlah daripada 46, uh, total chromosome kita ada uh, 92 for example. So, can you imagine the mess up of organism that is produced? Uh, that's why lah allopolyploidy ni is not common in uh, animal. So, they're common in plant. Okay, moving on. Uh, so, ni antara contoh allopolyploidy yang selalu kita bincangkan masa semester 1. So, production of tea estivum ataupun bread wheat uh, yang kita guna sekarang lah gandum. Okay? Uh, so, actually tea estivum ni dia datang daripada spesies yang berbeza dulu. Okay? Dia bukan adalah spesies yang tiba-tiba dah ada. Okay? Actually, dia adalah mating antara different species barulah dapat tea estivum. Yang kita gunakan untuk bread production. Okay. Okay. Cuba kita tengok dia punya origin. Actually untuk dapat tea estivum ni. Awal-awalnya originally adalah kita kacukkan mating antara AA cross BB. Kita simplified version lah eh. Nak sebut nama saintifik dia panjang sangat. Okay. So AA cross dengan BB. So kita dapat hybrid AB. Kenapa saya panggil hybrid? Sebab hybrid usually sterile. Okay. Uh, so dia dapat 14 kromosom. Kenapa 14 kromosom? Sebab AA ni normal meiosis dapat 7. Uh, BB ni normal meiosis dapat 7 juga. So 7 plus 7. So kita dapat 14 kromosom. Tapi, 14 kromosom ni is not homolog with each other. Okay, kenapa tidak homolog? Sebab dia datang daripada spesies yang berbeza. Uh, so, kita dapatlah hybrid AB. So, what happen is, in hybrid AB, uh, myotic error occur and self-fertilization occur. So, kita dapat seterusnya spesies yang lain which is AABB. Ah so kita dah double kan dia punya kromosom number from 14 kita dapat 2028. Kenapa saya kata species AABB ni sebab dia dah ada homologous kromosom. So dengan kata lain dia dah boleh buat meiosis, dia dah boleh produce gamete. So dengan kata lain AABB ni adalah species. Maksudnya organism yang boleh reproduce yang fertile. Kalau hybrid tadi usually ster sterile. Okay. And then what happen is AABB kita kacukkan dengan DD. 
so kita buat normal meiosis for uh, 28 dapat 14 uh, 14 dapat 7 so kita dapat hybrid ABD kenapa saya kata hybrid sebab once again dia adalah ster sterile so 14 plus 7 kita dapat 21 kromosom and then apa yang berlaku adalah ABD ni undergo meiotic error selalunya non disjunction after 8000 years barulah kita dapat AABBDD so can you imagine that uh, jap kita settlekan ni dulu so kalau kita doublekan kromosom number ni kita akan dapat 42 which is dia dah ada homologous kromosom ok uh, so can you imagine actually to produce new species is not as easy uh, as we learn from books ok or from reading ok it takes several hundred years or maybe thousand years to produce new species uh, maybe kita boleh produce species yang baru dengan teknologi yang canggih lah untuk masa sekarang but uh, bukan mudah ok it's not that easy to produce new new species ok so uh, soalan yang selalu ditanya dalam exam uh, kenapa hybrid sterile so jawapan dia selalunya inilah no homologous chromosome so no meiosis occur no gamete will be produced and then the next question that usually asks from uh, in examination how sterile hybrid can become fertile macam mana kita nak jadikan dia fertile from sterile jawapan dia by doubling the chromosome number and then ada lagi satu soalan uh, macam mana kita nak memperbanyakkan sterile hybrid sedangkan kita tahu dia tak boleh produce offspring. Uh, jawapan dia selalunya kita buat kalau plants kita buat vegetative propagation. Okay, maksudnya kita ambil mana-mana parts daripada plant tu kita try to grow new plants. Okay. Okay. Uh, ini contoh lain kamu boleh baca sendiri sama saja. Okay that's all for hybridization.